There are moments in life that we would never expect to experience. But what do we do when reality turns out to be more shocking than the darkest fantasies? It was just such an ordeal that befell our hero. Returning home early, he found his wife in the arms of his son-in-law. Being a witness to adultery is a piercing pain, which is difficult to describe in words. But our hero decided not to remain idle. He could not simply pass by without punishing both cheaters. His hot blood and sense of justice led him to decisive action. Thus began a story of revenge and destruction. He took on the role of judge and executor. His actions were a powerful blow to the traitors who had broken all boundaries of trust. What became of the deceived man and his cheating wife? What path will the protagonist choose, leaving them alone with their actions? What secrets and ulterior motives will fate expose? In this gripping story, we will plunge into the darkness of betrayal and revenge. We'll learn the price to pay for breaking trust and the consequences when the lines between love and betrayal are blurred. Get ready for a dramatic turn of events as our characters' lives intertwine into an intricate web of lies, deceit, and self-sacrificing revenge. Welcome to a world of amazing stories where fate becomes a fair judge and people pay the price for their actions. Hello friends, sorry for so many letters. Outwardly, I seem to be calm, functioning normally. But when I sit down with myself, my thoughts get mixed up. I'll tell you how I can. You know, I'm not stupid at 45, I'm not handsome, but I'm not scary either. In any case, women do not shy away. I'm in good, or rather in very good physical shape. I am a former pentathlete, and now I train for myself. Way back in the 89, I opened a cooperative, which has grown into a small but very profitable firm. We make special software for pharmaceutical research. Married, or rather was married, for 17 years with a second marriage. My first wife died. I left a 25-year-old son who lives with my parents in the United States. My second wife of 42 years also has a second marriage. She divorced her first husband because of his drinking and because of his beatings. This is not fiction at all. He died rather quickly after the divorce from overdose. From her first marriage, she had a daughter. She is 22 years old now. I didn't adopt her daughter. I just raised her as my own. She's finishing medical school and got married last year. The day before yesterday, I was supposed to fly to the United States to negotiate. I had to change planes in Switzerland. Had a six-hour layover in Zurich. Checked my mail. There's a letter from a client in the States. He had family problems, apologized, asked to postpone our meeting for three whole weeks and to meet in Germany. You know, I was even glad. I canceled the flight and took a morning ticket to Moscow. I did not call home. I thought I would make a surprise. Yesterday I flew to Moscow, came home, and my wife was gone. I thought she was out of town. I have a house there, still my grandfather's general's dacha, long ago converted into a modern house inside. Since I was tired, I did not drive, just called a cab. As we remember now, because the cab arrived, that's what I saw. When I drove up, I didn't open the gate, I just went in through the side gate. The garage was open, and there were two cars in it, my wife's and my daughter's. From the garage into the house. Just wanted to raise my voice when I heard some very, very distinctive noises. I went to the bedroom, the door was not completely closed, I looked from the corridor and shit. My wife was on the bed with my daughter's husband, 25 years old. For about five minutes, she stood there freaking out. I don't remember when I got my phone, started making movies. Then the pain hit him like a knife. He came to his senses, realized what was going on, he was shaking all over, and at the same time, he was completely calm. I stepped through the door and asked, don't you need a third? My wife jumped up and got off him. She stood naked by the bed and murmured, you've got it all wrong, I'll explain everything to you. Somehow, calmly I said, so maybe you can put on clothes or still naked and explain, or let's see a movie and explain that I misunderstood. Then something came to this jerk, 
He jumped up and rushed at me to take away my phone. Well, he jumped, and then he lay down. He was lying on the floor, his face smashed, looking at me. My wife is petrified by the bed. I call my daughter and say, I'll send you a movie. Watch it, my wife, when she heard it, fell to her knees and yells, no need. While yelling, my daughter calls, this is not true. I turned on Skype. I say, watch it live. I turned on Skype and said, see it live. I bellowed, crawled under the bed, tried to crawl away, shook out his car keys from his pants, her car keys from her bag, apartment, cottage, bank card, and phone. I said, get dressed and get out of here. And the wife was like, and where I go? I said, back where I got off? The hell. In general, I drove them out. My daughter called, set her husband at the door whining, asking to talk, did not let. Mother also did not let. Here such a surprise did unexpected arrival. Good though restrained, did not kill them there. In the bedroom, on the wall grandfather's saber hangs all the same. Well in front of her not caught, tried on a pizza, does not take. Tomorrow, I will go to Moscow to file for divorce. And a couple of my thoughts, I will not touch them with a finger. I destroyed them in another way. By the way, my wife has already called me and said that we should talk. In response, I offered her to watch a fresh adult film. The one I shot at the cottage, at the same time, I explained the simple truths about the relationship between people after cheating. Her lover, I no longer work and by specialty in Moscow, exactly will not work. My daughter's movie apartment belongs to my company, so it does not shine there. My grandfather's dacha belonged to me before the wedding. So my wife also does not shine there. Our apartment and cars belong to the firm. And the firm is registered to my father as it were. My wife spent the last five years to not work. My wife has not worked for the last five years. There is only $15,000 in the joint bank account. And I will not put a penny more there. I have already turned off the credit cards of American banks. I was cold to her tears when she asked me what to live on. I advised to work as a prostitute for underage girls, for example. Thanks to my previous experience, I am surprised myself. When I talked to her, I was calm and most interestingly, polite. But as soon as she hangs up, my neighbor at the cottage is a video surveillance system. The cameras installed on the perimeter of the house and record my area, including, I asked him to see the records. He immediately realized what it was he said that this has been going on for over a year. He knew, but did not want to get involved. Made a selection and gave me a printout where you can see their comings and goings. And when I was away, two times a week for 14 months. It's not a mistake. It's a system or even systematic. It's a conscious choice. I carried her in my arms for almost 20 years, blowing dust off. And as a result, I was dipped in the shit, how she will live where and whether she will, that is, believe me, only her business. After tomorrow is going to pick up her things, I give everything, including jewelry. There are jewelry and watches for 95100. Kilobucks will sell, will not die of hunger. Her old one room at the Presnia rented will run out of contract. She may move there herself, and why not? But after tomorrow, we see her for the last time. The application will be considered in court without me. I do not need swinging, and about the fact that she was blown into the ears. So she is a psychiatrist by training, she should have understood, and about her daughters only should have thought with his head, not his vagina. Thank you for listening. And now on to the second story. Before you is a story that shook the very depths of trust and morality. A young and seductive wife, seemingly bound by marriage, finds herself embroiled in a dangerous game of adultery. But the dark mystery of this story lies not only in the fact of adultery itself, but in the choice of her new lover. He turned out to be not just a stranger, but an old man who cleverly planted her on the treacherous path of adultery. How could this happen? What prompted the young wife to leave her husband and plunge into the dangerous vortex of senile passion? How the old man seized her heart and destroyed marital happiness. In this amazing story, we will penetrate into the innermost corners of the soul of the main character 
and try to unravel the mystery that shakes the foundations of her marriage. We will unravel the mysterious nature of the old man who gained power over her heart and forced her to renounce everything she once held dear. Get ready for shocking revelations, revelations, and startling twists and turns of events. There is no room for stereotypes and ordinariness. Here is just an amazing story of infidelity, which tells of the weaknesses of human nature and the temptations that can destroy the strongest bonds. Welcome to a world of drama and passion, where the delicate threads of fate intertwine and people face moral choices that can change their lives forever. And we're in for quite a big and interesting two-part story today. And today I will read them one by one. Enjoy. Hi all. I'm writing the first one. I don't know why. I just want to share. I'm 29 now, married on the fly at 21. But I loved her and she kind of loved me too. My folks liked her. They all praised her. She was still going to school in another city. I used to pick her up and bring her around all the time. Then my daughter was born. I opened my own business and everything was fine. She graduated from university and came to work as a doctor. Started noticing that it got cold. Didn't like my touch, intimacy once a month, and then with great reluctance. Trying to make it work somehow, talked, made gifts, went to the sea too. My parents always took their granddaughter, sat with her when we went out. Then she started working late. I understood everything. It was work. You know, I work a lot myself, but I always paid attention to her. And at one point I took her phone, and there I found a love correspondence, where she wrote how she loved him, and that she waited every time. There were no direct words about intimacy, it's worth noting, but kind of like that very intimacy they were discussing too. She said that she was not faking it with him, that her orgasms were real, and she was fine with me too, she could do it three times in one go. I was shocked when I read it. She saw her phone in my hands, and what do you think, jumped on me in front of our daughter, tried to take the phone away hysterically. My daughter was very frightened, I barely calmed her down, and took her to his room to watch cartoons. Meanwhile, my wife was sobbing in the bedroom, saying that it was just a correspondence and nothing more, and that she loved only me. I didn't believe it, she asked for forgiveness for a week, then I found this lover, it turned out to be a man of 55. Her colleague at work, by the way wife, is 28. I talked to him. He apologized and claimed it was stupid, and they were playing around, that he was old, and he didn't even have a heart on anymore. I didn't believe it, but I forgave my wife. We have a child. Well, she fooled around, I forgave her. But it was just the beginning of a deep asshole. And yes, she had enough money. By that time my business was going well, we bought a car, a big house, lived separately from my parents, she wore a mink coat to her hospital, what she lacked, I do not know. Part 2 Before I continue writing, I know that you have probably already said or written that I am a horny deer, and I was waiting for a retard, and everything like that. Yes, I will totally agree, but then I thought things would work out. Also. The lover was an alcoholic with a hearing aid, to say the least, and looked not 55, but all of 70. I kept thinking, fuck it. It had been a couple of months since I spotted my wife on the change. Wife's behavior changed, attention, warmth, constant physical proximity, delicious dinners, and other things. But as you might have guessed, it did not last long. After a while everything changed again. Again the cold. Again, something was wrong. One night, when she was asleep, I took her phone and asked for details of calls and SMS through a private office megaphone, you know. And that's when I freaked the fuck out. From the moment I spilled their correspondence in contact, they did not stop communicating for a day, only now it was not in VK, and via text messages and through calls. It just sucked, a cloud of texts and calls every day. I was up all night, in the morning she left for work and I followed. I couldn't stand it and went into her office, took her phone and started texting him from her phone and immediately the situation repeated itself. She jumped on me and started taking my cell phone away. 
I showed her the printout. In response, she said, I'm sorry. He continued texting me, but it was just correspondence. He was complimenting me, and that was it. No meetings, only communication. And again, our song is good, snot, tears, I love only you. In short, a week of nervousness, and yes, I'm a retard dear, agreed to try and move on. Then found him on her friends on classmates. His phone number in her smartphone, scandals, she explained that the work required, but she deleted him from everywhere in the end. And again, all seemed well, attention, understanding, together on vacation, together to the movies, to friends, I somehow even briefly forgot. But as you might have guessed, then things went south again, and I hired a detective. I bought her a new phone, but before I gave her the detective, I reflashed the phone and put a tracking program on everything. Contact, calls, texts, classmates, screenshots, and so on, and so forth. After a short time, I was freaking out again. They were so encrypted, it was just plain creepy. He had a left VK page, threw a couple of pictures in there. She left comments under the pictures. He saw them and removed. In response, he changed the status of the page. She saw the status and again left comments. If it wasn't for the program, I never would have figured out how they communicate. Also, the program was recording the surroundings from the phone's microphone around the clock, and I knew that he was sitting in her office every day, and they were chatting there, making sweet talks and making appointments. And she also had an old push-button phone at work and a left SIM card he had given her. I was totally freaked out, even though I knew, but I needed direct evidence, so I waited. I pretended everything was fine, I smiled at her, and she was being so nice, by the way, she would sleep with me, and then the next day to him. And I kept listening, all their conversations. As it turned out, her relatives were also covering for her, an uncle and an aunt. It just did not get into my head. Her relatives are giving her niece advice on how to stray and not be burned. Can you imagine? I also found out that her lover had been feeding her pills from the tranquilizer group, and of course she got hooked on them. She couldn't live without them. And now she can't live without them. She has been taking them for over six months. It was like some kind of crazy show on the Rossio channel. But man, it was really happening in my life, believe it or not. She was like with her ass, she could sense that I suspected something, but couldn't figure out how. She was discussing with her lover how they could hide better. He kept calling her to go in the car to hook up, but she was afraid, foreboding said bad things. There was a stakeout at her work. I wanted to catch her in the act with him. Her nerves were giving up like hell, and one day she told her lover that she suspected I was tracking her movements on the phone I had given her, and said she would leave the phone in her car in the parking lot and go with him herself. And it just so happened that I was out of town at the time, I didn't make it. But I had their correspondence, their dialogues. I decided to stop surveillance, because my nerves were giving out completely, I could not even smile at her anymore. In the evening after the meeting with my lover, she called me and offered to have some champagne and that I make steaks. Of course I agreed, at home she was glowing, hugging, and kissing me, and I was waiting for her to take her daughter to her parents for a sleepover, so we could be alone and enjoy the champagne and dinner. When she left, the first thing I did was to take a knife and cut my fur coat, not weekly, all the way down my back, so I wouldn't have to wear it or sell it. I poured the champagne and waited. She came back cheerful, sat down at the table, and I made a toast. To the old men's bedfellows and I clinked the glass in a gulp. She jumped up and began to resent me for calling her that. She was offended. How could I say such disgusting things to her with an old man? Up. He's ugly, with a hearing aid, all drunk. And I sat there, smiling, and dozed up and started retelling their dialogues from work. She continued to stand her ground. How could you think that of me? There were no insults on my part. I just told her everything I knew with a smile, and I was getting better and better. Eventually, she realized that this was the end, 
I knew about everything and I had proof. In tears and sobs, she admitted that yes, she was cheating, that she didn't know what she was thinking. She admitted that she was on pills and couldn't quit drinking them, that she helped her lover to do some false certificates. All in all, total crap, only I already knew all that. Yeah, I forgot to tell you what made her cry. When I told her that I knew everything, she wanted to leave right away, like I insulted her and she was leaving. And of course she went to put on her fur coat. But when she opened the closet and saw it, she immediately had tears flowing. My coat, why, why? Anyway, in the night she went to her aunt and uncle. One by one, they gave her advice that I would never be able to prove anything and that I would never make it. My wife asked me to find her an apartment with them. In the morning she arrived as if nothing had happened and said the same thing. It was just correspondence. She was already on the pill. But I also gave away my cards that I had heard all the conversations with her relatives. Anyway, I won't go into detail. I wanted to do three posts, but because it could be a very long story. Bottom line, lots of snot and tears, and she hates him and stuff like that. I didn't make the whole story public. Only my parents and my close friends who helped follow up know about it. I let her live at my house until she could find a place to live. Yes, say I'm a retard, fine. But I chose to fuck it all up and let them do what they want. She's going to go to treatment for addiction this week. And I'm doing fine. I've been in a new relationship for two months now. And I'll also tell you, everyone was carrying her in their arms. My friends liked her, my relatives. What a good wife. My friend's parents were toasting that their sons would find a wife like mine. How wrong they were with that toast. And she keeps trying to win me back. We'll forgive one last chance. Here you tell me if this is not vitiatism. Please give me advice on how to get away from my ex because she is specifically ruining my current relationship. I would appreciate it. Dear listeners, friends, thank you for watching this video, for listening to that whole long story, and for subscribing to the channel, giving likes, dislikes, and all kinds of comments on each of our stories. Thank you so much, it helps the channel grow. Also, if you're not already subscribed, you risk missing the next videos, you can do so right below this video by clicking the subscribe button so it becomes grayed out. I'm not saying goodbye, I'm saying see you soon, and I also wish you the best of health, and please take care of your loved ones.